Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship where we gather to celebrate the life of Laura Beth Miller and we gather as witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we come and we share in this moment that God has set before us all. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is God who made us, and to God we belong. For the Lord is good, and God's steadfast love endures forever, and God's faithfulness to all generations. Let us worship God. Let us sing together number one, holy, holy, holy. Friends in Christ, God knows our need before we ask, and in our asking prepares us to receive the gift of grace. Let us open our hearts to God's healing presence. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Holy God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready than we are to pray. You know our hearts and our minds before we confess and forgive us before we repent. Show us now your grace as we face the mystery of life and death with the hope you have given in Christ. Help us to offer you our sorrow and doubt so that your healing love may restore us to live anew. In Christ's name we pray, amen. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting, and I declare to you that in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives us all our sin, strengthen us in all goodness, and the Holy Spirit keep us in eternal life. Amen. As surely as God has forgiven us, God is with us in life and in death, 
and in life beyond death. God is our constant source of love and comfort. Through familiar readings from the book of Psalms and Isaiah, we, remind, we are reminded that all human life may be but for a moment. God's love will never end. Listen now for the word of God. A reading from Psalm 121. I lift to my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from God who made heaven and earth. God will not let your foot be moved. The one who keeps you will not slumber. God is your keeper and your shade at your side. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. God will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. God will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. The prophet Isaiah speaks to us from chapter 55. May we always seek the Lord and call upon God who is near. May the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them all return to the Lord who may have mercy on them and to our God who will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress Instead of the briar shall come up with a myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that we shall not be cut off. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Now let us pray together, remembering and honoring those we have loved and lost, as well as those we have the privilege of knowing today. Let us bow our heads. O oh God, before whom generations rise and pass away. We praise you for all your servants who having lived this life in faith now rest eternally with you. Today we especially thank you for your child, Laura Beth Miller, for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace that you gave her, that kindled in her the love of your name and enabled her to care for her family and serve your community in many ways. We thank you that for her, death is past and pain has ended. May she find eternal peace in your presence through the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Today, we ask your special blessings of consolation for her children. Barb, Marcia, Jeff, and Curtis, and those who love them. Console them in their grief. Watch over her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, as well as the members of her extended family. Offer consolation to all who would call her friend. Surround all of us with your comforting love, and give us the strength and courage to face the future with hope. In your mercy, we ask that you send your healing light upon all who are present here today. And may each one of us be truly grateful for your gracious gift of life. And may we be empowered by your spirit to call upon your name for peace and guidance every day of our lives. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Our first New Testament reading comes from the book of Romans in the 8th chapter, and I invite you to listen again for the word of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. 
for in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading comes from the book of John, the 14th chapter, and again, let us listen for the word of God. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am going, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. This passage from John reminds us to not let our hearts be troubled. For Jesus came that we might have life, and Jesus returns to lead us home. On this day, you may be assured that your dear mother and grandmother, great-grandmother, aunt and friend has found a dwelling place in the house of God. I mean, Jesus has gone ahead to prepare a place for each one of us that we might live with the hope and assurance that God is with us today and every day of our lives and beyond life that we know. And we have come together this day to worship the one God of all creation who has redeemed us in Jesus Christ, who sustains us every day by the power of the Holy Spirit. But we've also come together to pause from the rush of our daily activities to remember and celebrate the life of Laura Beth Miller. Earlier last week, I sat with her daughter, Barb, for some time. And after talking for, I don't know, an hour or more, I think there is much to celebrate and remember. I'd already begun to form my own picture of Beth Miller simply from knowing and working with Barb for the last 18 months. Beth was a person who cared deeply about her family and her friends. She loved reaching out into the world where she lived, serving where she could, and sharing her delicious creations at every turn. She loved to cook, trying new recipes throughout the years, and her cooking was so good her family members never wanted to miss a meal. I'm going to guess that some of her goodies we have shared here at First Presbyterian Church may have come from a Beth Miller recipe or two. Not only did she enjoy cooking, but she could also, was a person who could also sew. And not just for fun, but to provide clothes for herself and I'm sure her children as well. And she was very happy to pass these skills along to her children, their grandchildren, anybody who would want to know. I asked Barb if her mom was social, as social as she is. And she replied, oh, she, she was so much more social than I am. I don't know if that could be true, but okay. For those of you who knew her for a long time, you may have danced a couple of square dances along the way. Or perhaps she was present to help you register to vote. On the other hand, if you're younger, maybe she was your 4-H leader. 
sharing gifts with that younger generation through the years. And Beth could do so many different things so well because she was really organized. And she liked to help others be organized as well. I'm sure that she was a great administrative assistant at the First Christian Church because churches and ministers always need organizational assistance along the way. I know that for a fact. As a farmer's wife, creativity and organization would have been necessary to keep things running. After all, there were chickens to care for and gardens to tend along the way. You think canning would have had to be completed when the bounty of the garden was ready to pick. And of course, she would have been busy taking care of her children and helping them grow up to be successful in their own lives. In her spare time, she loved to gather with friends, and she and her husband, not just her by herself, but with friends to play cards and share fellowship and fun. And she loved to travel. It seems a trip through the Panama Canal was particularly memorable. But she was happy to explore anywhere in the United States with her husband, in particular throughout the years when they were able to get away from the farm. Not only was she a member of this congregation since July 1956, she was also a longtime member of the American Legion Auxiliary known as the Deers. Now, this was the first time I had ever heard their name, so I learned something new. But she was well known for serving in that organization for many years. For those of you who knew Beth well, there are many memories that you will share. I've seen just a few pictures out there knowing your family has so many stories to tell in the days and weeks and years ahead. But one of her favorite things to do, especially in her later years, was to be a grandma. And I would like to share a few memories that some of her grandchildren shared as that day drew near. Emily Knox Lunt wrote, My sweet grandmother passed away this week. I feel so grateful for having grown up so close to her and for all the wonderful memories we shared. She taught me how to wrap a perfect present, set a proper table, and bake. Spending time at the farm meant so much to her and Grandpa, and we enjoyed sledding on the big hill, helping in the garden, riding four-wheelers, smashing cans, playing in the corn and hay, and just running around. All the wonderful family gatherings allowed me to create such treasured family bonds with my cousins, aunts, and uncles. As an adult, Grandma and Grandpa made the road trip to visit us in every place we've lived, including Texas, where they were also picking up a donkey. That's a combination. <laughs> The memories go on and on, she writes. Most important, Grandma showed me such love. I will forever remember and cherish the opportunity I had to spend her final days with her, sharing many of these memories and my love for her. Jessica Marie Miller shared this memory. Heaven gained another angel yesterday. She was Mom, Grandma Beth, and Gigi to those who loved her. She would work as the church secretary, then immediately change her clothes when she got home and got to work tending her garden, cleaning the house, and cooking. So many memories and inside family jokes were made over the years. I'm just going to say it because it's written here. He threw it in the bitch. Obviously, they still make the family laugh to this day, and they know what it means, and I, well, I know what it means, but I don't know what it means. <laughs> there were so many memories. Rest in peace, Grandma, and give Grandpa hugs for us. Lindsay Klingen wrote, love you, Gigi. Give Grandpa a big hug from all of us. Ashley Roy my sweet Grandma Beth passed away last night. She is now at peace with my grandpa. 
We will miss you. Love you always. Laura Varwig writes, the world's best pancake maker. My sweet grandma Beth passed away yesterday. I'm so blessed to have shared a name and my red hair with her. You'll be forever missed, Grandma. Thank you for giving all of us grandkids so many special memories to cherish forever. Give Grandpa big hugs from us all. And finally, Christina Miller writes, she cared for her in her final days and weeks. My last memory of my grandma, I was at work, not on her floor. It was later on about her bedtime. I came to her room to check on her. The other girls had already gotten ready for bed. I helped swing her feet up into bed and tucked her in. I kissed her on the forehead and said, Good night, Grandma. I love you. She replied back, Good night, my sweet girl. That's what she had called me for the past year. I love you too. I gave her a nice tight bear hug and she just sighed, closed her eyes and went to sleep for the night. I could tell she could feel my love for her. That's how I'll always remember my grandma. Even as I put these thoughts on paper, I had my own tears, and I didn't know her well. But so much love bundled up in one woman and then shared with all of you. This is the very essence of Jesus' commandment, to love one another. This is really our highest call in life. Not to be perfect or discover the next big thing, but simply to love each other, respect one another, and share kindness and compassion with one another every day and all the time. Perhaps when we figure out that one simple rule, the world will find at least a moment of peace. Until then, we do our best to follow this command, even as we know that for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There's a time for laughter and tears, and sometimes it's all mixed together. But no matter what emotions will flow on this day and in the days ahead, it is now a time for mourning, for remembering, for sharing, for sharing stories that allow you to have that blessing of being able to remember together, because it's through your stories that you remember and the tears that you shed that our relationships can grow even stronger as we celebrate the life of one who has gone before us again and again and again. Laura Beth Gigi Miller may no longer make pancakes or gather the family around the table for a meal, but every time you gather, you will remember and know that her spirit lives in and among all of you. For God has made everything beautiful in its time, and now it is her time to be with God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God, in Jesus Christ, you have prepared many dwelling places within your house. We ask you to give us faith to see some sure sign of your reign in this hour. Give us the certainty to trust that your love for us will never fail, even when we are blinded by apathy or fear, by despair or grief. Remind us always that you are with us, no matter where our life takes us. We ask you to be with this family as they remember someone they loved so deeply. Protect each one of them and soothe them in this time of sorrow. And give all of us the courage and strength to face the future with hope and love. In your mercy, we ask you that you send your healing light upon all who are present today. Watch over those who could not be with us. Lift 
the heavy sorrow and give us hope in your eternal promises that we may bravely walk our earthly pathways and anticipate our joyful rest when life is done. Now with one voice, let us honor God's name as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the conclusion of this service, please know the family extends an invitation to everyone to join them downstairs for a time of fellowship and also some fun food. And now at this hour, merciful God, into your hands we commend your servant, Laura Beth Miller. By your creative power, you gave us the gift of life, and in your redeeming love, you have given us new life in Christ. Receive Laura Beth Miller into the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard each of your hearts in Christ Jesus. May the blessing of God go with you. Amen.